Welcome to the Copernicus Project video series, Teaching Science in Five Easy Pieces. This module focuses on Earth science. We've formatted the video so that you can watch them in sequence, like a feature film, or instantly drill down to a specific video or chapter that addresses your own area of interest. Because some viewers may be jumping around to various chapters and videos, our introductions contain some of the same orientation information. The easy pieces are the five E's that comprise a learning model known as constructivism. Traditional education is teacher-centered, while constructivism is student-centered. It's based on the concept that students learn best when they're actively engaged with their subject matter rather than listening passively to a lecture. Studies show that students learn science best by doing science, not hearing about it. The role of the teacher is then raised from someone who is simply dispensing information to someone who structures activities that improve communication, that challenge students' perceived notions, and that help students build on prior knowledge. In this and in each of the other videos, we show classroom examples of how you can use the five E's to get students actively involved in their own learning. Each video is broken into five chapters, one for each of the five E's. Engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. You may use the menu function to instantly jump to any classroom chapter focusing one of the five E's. Each chapter will be preceded by a brief explanation of how that particular E should progress, as well as the roles of the students and the instructor. The first E is engage. It's all about involving the students in something they are interested in. Ideally, it will be tied to science content to be covered later on in the lesson. During the engage, Students first encounter and identify the instructional mission. Here they make connections between past and present learning experiences. They lay organizational groundwork for activities ahead and they stimulate their own involvement with their anticipation of these activities. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with our warm-up today. We have the solar system and we're going to label some specific parts of the solar system. Do we have a volunteer who'd like to come up and label the terrestrial planets in red? Okay, Logan? You can engage a student by asking a question, defining a problem, surprising them with an unexpected event, or acting out a problematic situation. This gets a student focused on the instructional mission. It's not unlike the marketing of a product. First, we need to grab the customer's attention. We do that by stimulating a sense of need. Once the student feels that basic need to know, he's motivated to take the steps necessary to satisfy his own natural human curiosity. For my engaged portion of the lesson plan, I like to have my students use technology. So I use a Promethean board and electronic pen, and the students are up out of their seats. We're using bodily kinesthetics. The students are interacting with the board and each other during the engagement portion of the lesson. And so where's the asteroid belt located? Between Mars and Jupiter. Excellent. And if you would label the asteroid belt for me. Thank you, Mammy. The second E is explore. In this step, students experience scientific phenomena and materials firsthand. They examine it and they interact with it. As they involve themselves, students develop a personal relationship to the mission. Working together in teams, students build the base of common experience, which will help them in the process of sharing and communicating. The teacher acts as a facilitator, providing materials and guiding the students' focus. It is a student's own inquiry process that drives the instruction during an exploration. So today we're going to explore and we're going to create a scale model of our solar system. And I have some materials for you to use. We're going to use two meter sticks. We have colored pencils and we have adding machine tape. So you're going to start with the sun and I'd like you to work in pairs to create a scale model. Let's see how you do. Okay, go ahead and get started. 
During the Explore, I provided the students with colored pencils with adding machine tape and two meter sticks. And I allowed the students to create their own scale model of the solar system. Yeah, make, just make sure like all the way to right here. As a teacher, I want to reveal the answer to them. The students worked in pairs and they were able to collaborate with each other. They were able to solve the problem amongst themselves. It was difficult because I wanted to reveal the answer, yet I stepped back and allowed them time to think and process and solve the answers on their own. The 30 is explain. This is when your students, all of them, explain what they found during the explore stage. Language motivates a student to sequence events he experienced into a logical format. Communication occurs several ways, between peers, between the teacher and students, and within the learner himself. Working in groups, learners support each other's understanding as they talk about their observations, ideas, questions, and hypotheses. And Logan, tell me what you're working on. Oh, the asteroid belt around Mars. And give me some information. What do you know about the asteroid belt? Uh, I know that it's made of rock and frozen material that's caught in the sun's gravity, and it orbits around Mars, or not around Mars, around the sun, and it uh, never got crushed, so it just stays there until something, until it's just floating around. This process leads to a communicable label, which gives a learner the means for sharing explorations. A common language enhances the sharing and communication. The teacher can augment that common language by providing labels for student findings and events that correspond to historical and standard language. The students' created works, such as writing, drawings, video, or recordings, provide tangible evidence of their progress and growth. So during the explain, I had the students come to the front of the room and they explained what they discovered and they compared their first scale model of their solar system with the accurate scale model of their second solar system. Now that we've finished today's lab experiment and you've had an opportunity to try the scale model independently as well as with the correct astronomical units, I'd like Antoinette and Maomi to come up to the front of the class and share with us what you've learned today. Okay, as you can see in the first project that we did without any astronomical units, we predicted that all the planets were pretty much equal in distance from each other. But once doing it the second time and knowing what the astronomical units were, we realized that after you get to the gas giants, all the planets start to double in distance from each other. The fourth E is elaborate. This is the application portion. Can the students take what they've learned and apply it to a new and different area or setting? Here, the students are encouraged to expand on new concepts and make connections. They apply their new understanding to the world around them. These connections often lead to further inquiry and new comprehension. This can lead to that special aha moment in a student. During the elaborate portion, I noticed that when Logan went up to the board and as he was writing the astronomical units above and below each of the planets, the light bulb went off for him. He realized once he hit the gas giants that there was a 
large distance between the planets, larger than what he realized. And Logan even used the word exponential, and he said there was an exponential distance between the gas giants. And to me, that's where the light bulb went off in his head. That's where true elaboration occurred. And you could see his real world connection from the lesson. What I learned is that once I got to Mars, not only did the planets in, uh, double in astronomical units, they exponentially increased after each gas giant following Jupiter. The fifth E is evaluate. This starts with the student's self-evaluation. They reflect on their own learning experience. It's also an ongoing diagnostic process that allows a teacher to determine if the learner has gained a good understanding of concepts and knowledge. Evaluation and assessment can occur at all points during the instructional process. Concrete evidence of learning becomes apparent as students, teachers, parents, and administrators communicate. This evidence of progress guides a teacher in further lesson planning. The evaluation process is continuous and gives the 5E model a cyclical structure. It's open-ended and open to change. You'll probably find an ongoing loop where questions lead not only to answers, but also to more questions. This can become a jumping off point for even greater enrichment of the student's education. Instruction is driven by both a predetermined lesson design and by the inquiry process itself. Well, the evaluation portion is really a reflection of what the students have learned. This is the time for the students to reflect on their learning, to think about what they gained as an individual in their learning. In my classroom, I have the students write in their science journal, and this is an opportunity for me to look at individuals and what they've learned. I'm able to respond and assess them on their learning. Now that we've finished this lesson we've, and we've learned about the distances between the planets and the correct astronomical units with your scale models, what I'd like you to do is to reflect upon your learning and write a two-paragraph journal reflection on what you've learned since the beginning of this lesson. With the 5E lesson plan, my students are using critical thinking much more than before I used the 5E lesson plan. They're reflecting on their learning, which I think is extremely important because they are taking ownership of their own learning as opposed to me lecturing to them. Also using technology with the 5E lesson plan is very helpful. Before, I was a little bit intimidated with using technology, but the 5E lesson plan has helped me, especially with the Engage, because I've become more creative as a teacher with my lesson plan designs. This is just one of five videos demonstrating the 5E method as an effective teaching tool. The full series covers physics, biology, chemistry, earth science, and elementary level science. The Copernicus Project and the University of California Riverside Graduate School of Education created this series with a vision for shaping ideas, shaping minds, and shaping the future. For more information on the Copernicus Project, please visit our website at copernicusproject.ucr.edu or call the number on your screen. Copernicus Project is a cooperative venture of UC Riverside, the Graduate School of Education, and Dean Stephen T. Bossert, the U.S. Department of Education, and the Office of Post-Secondary Education. We're grateful for the support of many other educators, institutions, and faculty members like you.